In this video, you'll see how to build a Schluter shower, specifically a curb shower. We're going to go over the framing, how to customize the shower tray, the backer boards, curb, and so much more. I'm excited because we have a ton of really great tips. Learning how to build a Schluter shower always begins with the floor. You want to inspect and see the floor joist spacing and secure the subfloor to the joist before you begin. This is critical. In this case, I'm dry fitting the shower tray, and typically you do get a template for the drain but I wanted to show you you could use a compass to draw that five inch circle on the subfloor. I then drilled a hole through the subfloor and simply used a jigsaw to cut that out. Now of course you could also use a hole saw but a jigsaw works really well and this ensures that the shower drain will work properly with the subfloor. If you find any irregularities with your subfloor you can fix that especially if they're small areas using feather finish. So I mix this up per the directions. You can mix up small batches which is awesome and that bag that I showed you is not very much. It's probably about $20, $25. And so if you have a small area that needs to be leveled you can use feather finish to accomplish that. For example between subfloor panels. Now if you have a larger area that needs to be self-leveled we can do that many different ways but obviously a self-leveling underlayment is the best way to go. So I'm going to be using great stuff anywhere where I have a gap between my bottom plate and my subfloor and also any type of penetration in the floor. So I simply fill those voids with the great stuff. I also did this around where the drain opening is located in the floor and this is going to help prevent the self-leveling underlayment from going down in there. Now it's critical to prime and I'm using P51 from Ardex because that's the primer I need for the self leveler I'm going to be using and I'm using a stiff brush for this. Really important to apply the primer per the directions and let that cure. Then you can move on to the self leveling but before you even do that it's good to have a sill seal up against the wall. This is going to give you an eighth inch expansion joint. Now I do have a really unlevel floor here so one of the things that I did was add screws in the floor to bring my level up to the level point. These are going to be indicators for where I need to pour this Artex K22. It's K 22F that I'm using and I first add my water then I add the self leveler to that. It's good to have a dedicated mixer for this but the K22F as long as you follow the directions you're going to get a really nice fluid consistency and you'll be able to pour that immediately after you mix it up. I do recommend having multiple buckets for this so you can pour bucket after bucket and the other thing with a self leveler is you do need to agitate it. It just doesn't self level itself so you can either use a spiked roller or you can use a notch trowel and you'll get a really nice level floor in the end. After I leveled the floor the next step was to waterproof the walls with curdy board and if you're using a shower niche like I am here I recommend using a story pole to help you position a niche where you want it in relation to your tile layout. I'm simply marking the location of the niche on the studs and I'm going to cut those studs using a variety of different tools. I think this is going to help you out. So I use my square and a circular saw to make the initial cut. You can then try to complete that cut with a reciprocating saw, but often I find using an oscillating multi-tool is best after that. I then added the bottom plate and screwed that in place. It's okay for you to make sure that this is nice and level, although it's not absolutely critical, but it does definitely help out to have a level bottom plate and top plate. From there, you can add your studs on the left and right. But before you do that, you want to ensure that the shower niche is centered on the shower or where you want it. Then you can add these side pieces, screw or nail them, but just make sure they're nice and square so that when you go to add the shower niche to the wall, it's going to be able to flank those studs and you'll be able to secure it properly. Then I put on my curdy board. Now I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I wanted to show you how I did this for the niche. I made a rough opening for where the niche is going to go based on that framing. Then I secured the cur curdy board to the studs, drew where that that rough opening was and again cut that out with my utility knife. The next step is to dry fit that niche, make sure that it again is where you want it to be, then you can mark on the curdy board with a marker where you can cut it out using an oscillating multi-tool. This will help you fit that shower niche like a glove inside the wall, then you can secure it to the studs using screws 
and washers every 12 inches. Then you can waterproof it using Schluter All Set and Curdy Band. You can add the Curdy Band vertically or horizontally first, it doesn't matter, just as long as you have two inches of overlap with the banding. That's important. By the way, if you're doing a bathroom remodel and you need help with that, join Home Repair Tutor's Platinum membership and make your project easier over at homerepairtutor.com. Frequently, studs are not even in plumb, so if that's the case in your bathroom, there's an easy solution to that. You want to check all the studs with your level. They also have to be 16 inches on center. Mark the stud to indicate where it's not plumb, like I did with these pencil marks. Then you can mix up Schluter All Set. So All Set is a thin set mortar. You want to mix it up to a fairly thick consistency so that it doesn't fall off your margin trowel. And what I'm doing here is simply applying that to the face of the stud and creating a V. So the V is going to help me wet shim this wall. Wet shimming is a great way to help your curdy board be nice and plumb and that's important for when the tile is going to be added to the walls. So what I did is I wet shim this wall and I simply attached the board and double checked that it remained plumb before fully sinking the screws and washers into the stud. So I didn't fully sink this and you can see the level is nice and plumb. Now another tip I have for you is to poke a hole in the back of the board where your valve is going to be and that's going to help you center the board and attach it to your plumbing wall where you need it to go. The other thing I wanted to mention when you're using curry board you need your screws and washers to be every 12 inches on your 16 inch on center stud framing. So make sure you do that and you'll be good to go with the curdy board and it won't be going anywhere. This is a super solid waterproofing backer board and I love using it. The next step was to add the drain. So I added my foam gasket and I changed chamfered the top of the pipe to get a tight fit with the curdy drain and then measured between the bottom of the flange and the top of that gasket then I used this awesome internal pipe cutter to cut that pipe to size. I love this pipe cutter. Then I chamfered the pipe that was just cut. And the reason I do that is to get a tight fit. Now the waterproofing for the curdy drain is very straightforward. You want to apply thin set using the curdy trowel, embed your curdy donut, and smooth that out using a six inch drywall knife. And make sure there's no thin set in the recess that I'm cleaning out. I do like the Schluter drain grates because they're adjustable. So they go up and down. You can move them side to side. You want to apply thin set between the drain grate and the black plastic that you see there and just make sure that it's square so that when you set your tile you'll be good to go. The next step is to add your shower tray and I recommend wiping down the surface to dampen it and you can apply your thin set using the flat side of the trowel then the notch side. The most important thing is to hold that 1 quarter inch by 3 eighths inch trowel at a 45 degree angle when you're applying the thin set. This maximizes the thin set so that when you set the shower tray and you walk on it, you're going to fully bond the tray to the floor. So make sure you do that. The other thing I did was customize the shower curb. So I actually cut it down, cut it in half, and then bonded it back together using Curdy Fix. The reason why I did this was to minimize the width of the curb. So if you want a smaller curb, you can totally do this. You just let that Curdy Fix set up, then you can bond the curb to the shower tray, the walls, and the floor using thin set mortar. I even apply a little bit of thin set to the side and the bottom of the curb so that when I set it in place, I can make sure that it's level and that it's gonna be nice and solid. Then you'll have to waterproof this, but before I did that, I mixed up some dry pack mortar to extend my shower tray. So the most important thing is to tamp this down and also make sure that it's sloped toward the shower drain so the water will drain toward that. I then waterproof the corners next. That's just my preference. So again, I apply thin set using the curdy trowel, embed my inside corners. These are Schluter curdy carrot corners. The most important thing with these is to make sure you smooth out any of the thin set with a damp sponge. That way you're not going to get a tremendous amount of buildup. I also like using a four inch drywall knife for this before I trowel more thin set on. This really just minimizes the amount of thin set I'm putting on the floor the curb and the wall but again I highly recommend using a sponge to get rid of any of the excess thin set that's on those surfaces that's going to help you out with your tile and then obviously if you've got curry board you need to waterproof the seams and the screws using Schluter All Set and the banding once again I highly recommend just sponging down everything to 
create a nice smooth surface. And then I waterproofed around the valve using a mixing valve seal. This is awesome and really is great for keeping that area waterproof. If you are extending the shower tray, you want to waterproof that using a piece of curdy membrane. I cut that to size and made sure it overlapped the shower tray and the wall by a minimum of two inches and I bonded it to the wall in the tray using Schluter All Set. I just made sure that again it was nice and smooth so that it didn't interfere with my tile work. I did the exact same thing for the shower curb. I just used a piece of curdy membrane because remember I have cuts in that curb and that's important to cover those with some type of membrane whether it's curdy or curdy band. So you have to make sure that you do that if you customize anything. But I hope that these tips help you out with building a Schluter shower. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out and I'll see you in the next video.